Hello guys, uh, this is Physics 103. This lesson is on nuclear physics and we will talk about uh, the structure of the nuclei. So, let's start with uh, the history of the discovery of the nuclei. So, Ernest uh, Rutherford in, uh, from 1910 to 1911, he conducted an experiment wherein he fired uh, alpha particles towards a gold foil. So uh, let me tell you the result of this experiment. So uh, this is his quote. So as he fired the uh, alpha particles uh, through the gold foil, so he said, it was as if you fired a 15 inch shell so the 15 inch shell was the alpha, alpha particles at a piece of tissue tissue paper at a, at a piece of tissue sorry tissue paper so the tissue paper was the gold foil and it came back and hit you so what's a 15 inch shell so a 15 inch shell it's is like a it's, it's a very big bullet so in, imagine you are firing a very big bullet at a very thin foil or he said a tissue paper and the bullet came back and hit you so that that was the result of his experiment so how did it help in um, probing the structure of the nucleus so what what he did was uh, these are the alpha particles so he fired them towards the very thin uh, gold foil so about uh, it's a, I think it's about uh, 1000 atoms thick so at that time uh, the current model for the atom was uh, JJ Thompson's uh, plum pudding model So what, what's the plum pudding model? So plum pudding model is like, uh, so if you're not familiar with plum pudding, we can go with chocolate chip model. So we have here our cookie and we have uh, chocolate chips inside the cookie. So the chocolate chips was the electrons and the cookie base was uh, the C of so th they thought of uh, a surrounding C of positively charged material so th they, they didn't know of protons back then so they, they, they just know that the C is positively charged because they know that the atom was uh, over all in all neutral so there must be something of positive origin to make the uh, electrons and the proton and the positively charged particles neutral inside the atom. So uh, with with his plum pudding idea in mind, he his initial guess was that the uh, alpha particles would easily could easily uh, pass through the gold foil so he here's the alpha particle with uh, some some being uh, deflected so what he did he was he put a detector around the gold foil and and he was actually correct so he detected some alpha particles uh, were deflected here here and here but he extended his idea what uh, so he was a bit uh, curious uh, what if I also want to to know if there there are some particles that could be deflected back so uh, he was thinking out of the box so 
what if uh, Thompson's plum pudding was wrong? So, he, he conducted an experiment again. And he got what he wanted. So, uh, by extending uh, this uh, detector 360 degrees all over the gold foil, of course, there's a room for for where the alpha particles would pass through. So, after he fired the alpha particles, some of them uh, some of them were bounced back. So, he was surprised and he thought that maybe it was wrong. So, uh, let's do another experiment. So, he did um, several experiments and what he observed was, was that it happened all the time. So, alpha partic there's a fraction of alpha particles that always uh, bounce back as they pass through the gold foil. So, how is this not consistent with the plum pudding model? Or the chocolate chip cookie model? So, uh, according to, to according from the plum pudding model, so if you pass the alpha particles inside the plum pudding, uh, so you have a sea of positively charged material inside the cookie. So uh, there isn't enough So he, cal uh, he calculated the electric field uh, produced by this sea of positively charged uh, material and uh, he, he used physics equation of course. So he calculated that uh, there isn't enough electric field produced by this positively charged material to deflect back the alpha particles. So according to physics, uh, this should only be deflected at small angles. Uh, so this is not possible for the plum pudding model. So he did another calculations and what, what he thought of the explanation for why uh, alpha particles were deflected was, uh, so this is our atom. So instead of the C of positively charged part, uh, material being evenly distributed throughout the atom. What he proposed was that uh, the sea of positively charged particles is concentrated at a very very tiny space inside the atom. So you, uh, of course you have your negatively charged particles inside the atom but most of the atom is actually empty so the sea of part the sea of positively charged is concentrated to what he called the no, no, nucleus and he uh, so he did some calculations and he measured that uh, this, the radius of the nucleus is in the range of uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 15 meters or 1 or in femto femtometers. So to compare uh, this radius of nucleus Oh, so one fem femtometer. So the the radius of the atom of the whole atom is uh, assuming that uh, it is a sphere in this case is on the range of one times ten to the minus ten or uh, one angstrom. So there is about ten to the minus five, ah, uh, ten to the five space around which there is uh, no charge at all. So 
the nucleus in which he proposed is concentrated in this very tiny volume. So, uh, in, in his model, when he did some calculations, he found out exactly that if you were to fire the alpha particles with this uh, very tiny space, so so some of course some of them will still be deflected, but uh, there. Is, uh, it, it matches with the fraction of the alpha particles that are bounced back in the screen. So, uh, if if you measure the fraction, it's about 1 in 20,000. So, it's a small fraction, but uh, this explains why uh, some of the alpha particles are bounced back uh, towards the screen because of this highly dense and positively charged nucleus. So, uh, so that was his discovery. So he discovered that the atom was not made of uh, a sea of positively charged particles, but it, uh, the positively charged particles was concentrated inside a nucleus. So today we can now uh, experimentally conduct experiments uh, that could could give us uh, results so uh, this is the radius of a nuclei so we now have a formula in calculating for calculating the radius of the nuclei so r being the radius of the nuclei is equal to some experimental constant R naught times A raised to one third. So R is the radius of the nuclei or nucleus. Uh, R naught is experimentally determined constant, so its value is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 15 meters or also called 1.2 femtometers so a uh, a is the number nucleon number which is equal to the number of protons which are the which are uh, Rutherford named after uh, named afterwards protons plus the number of neutrons. So, discovery of neutrons was later on established by Chadwick, but we would not we would not go into uh, deeper detail on this discovery. So, uh, this is this formula will determine the radius of the nuclei given. Uh, the number of protons and neutrons inside the atom. So, uh, the nuclear number A uh, as we have said earlier is equal to the number of protons Z plus the number of neutrons. So Z uh, determines you, uh, gives you the number of protons. And N is, would be, it would be the number of neutrons. So we will be using this formula. Also A equals Z plus N. Uh, A is also sometimes called the mass number. So it's called mass number because you can easily calculate 
the mass number from the number of protons and the number of neutrons because uh, mass of the mass of protons and uh, uh, neutrons is approximately the same so since they are uh, almost the same uh, they ha uh, scientists have used a unified atomic mass unit so so one u or one atomic mass units one so one u is equal to 1.6605 times 10 to the minus 27 kilogram so uh, this mass is approximately the mass of the proton and the mass of the neutron.